Hi, this is Robbie here to give you an introduction to NetSuite's SuiteScript platform. This is version 4 of this video, recorded on April 16th, 2014, using NetSuite version 2014.1. In this course, you will learn what SuiteScript is, how to create a script record in NetSuite, how to write and upload a JavaScript code file, how to run a script, how to disable your scripts, and where to go to learn more about NetSuite scripting. So first, let's take a look at the definition of SuiteScript and see some reasons why you should learn it. SuiteScript is a JavaScript-based application programming interface that gives developers the ability to extend NetSuite. Some features of SuiteScript are, it is a standards-based code platform that adds powerful validation, it enables creation of front-end interfaces on the fly, and it allows custom back-end development to meet specialized needs. Why would you want to learn SuiteScript? so you can tailor NetSuite's functionality to better fit your business, so you can improve user-friendliness of your system, so you can get a promotion at your company, and of course, so you can become an office superhero. Here's what you need to know to start. This class is intended for NetSuite administrators. In other words, you should be using the administrator role in NetSuite. If you're not using the administrator role, some additional setup steps may be required for your role to have access to the SuiteScript platform. This training is not officially endorsed by or affiliated with the NetSuite Corporation. What you'll be learning here is my set of best practices compiled independently throughout years of experience. Before starting this class, you should at least have some familiarity with using NetSuite and navigating the menu systems. And finally, you should have at least some familiarity with coding in JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript and you'd like to learn it, check out the free tutorial at www.w3schools.com js. So let's get started with creating your first script. Step one is to download a good text editing program that's designed to write code if you don't already have one. If you're on a Mac, you can download Text Wrangler from barebones.com slash products slash text wrangler. Or if you're on a Windows computer, you can download Notepad++ from Notepad++ from notepad-plus-plus.org, also for free. If you need to download one of these programs now, go ahead and pause this video here and get your new text editor up and running. Step two is to make sure that SuiteScript is enabled in your NetSuite account. I'll show you how now. So first, just mouse over the Setup tab in NetSuite and go to Company, Enable Features. Then click on the Suite Cloud tab. You should see Client Suite Script and Server Suite Script enabled. If they're not, Enable them now and click Save. Now we're ready to create a script. There are two main ways of setting up a script record in NetSuite. One is to actually create a script record and link it to one or more record types. The other way is to specify the script functions on a custom form. So I'm going to show you how to create a script record first and then afterwards we'll do the same thing from a custom form. So from here, mouse over the customization menu and then go to scripting, scripts, and new. Take a look at the various script types that you can choose from here. You can learn about each of these in depth in the help documentation. For now, click on client script. This is the screen that you'll specify the parameters for your script on. For our training scenario, our goal will be to display a pop-up greeting message to the user when they open a new contact record. So in the name field, let's call this script contact-client. When naming scripts, it's a good idea to specify which record types they apply to and what type of script it is in the name field. That way, when you have 200 scripts, it'll be easy to tell how each one is used at a glance from that initial scripts list. In the ID field, type in underscore contact underscore client. 
The reason we do this is if we were to leave it blank, NetSuite would give it a generic ID, such as custom script 1 or custom script 58, depending on how many scripts you have. That kind of script ID isn't very useful for developers. We'll leave the description field blank for now. Finally, click on the page in it field label to see the description of the function trigger we're going to be working with. This function will run when the user opens this record type in any mode that lets them enter data, such as edit mode or create mode, but not view mode. If that doesn't make any sense yet, don't worry. It will in a few minutes when we run the script. Close the pop-up window. So before we go any further, let's switch to our text editor and write our JavaScript code. I'm going to open Text Wrangler here and open up a new text file if you don't already have one. So first we're going to save the file. Saving the file as a JavaScript file will let the text editor know how it should color code the text as we type, and it just makes it easier. So it's a good idea if you're going to be working with SweetScript to have a, a folder called SweetScripts that you can save your scripts in. So we're going to call this file contactscripts.js. So now it's a good idea to start your script file with an identifying header. First line can be your company name as a comment. I'm going to put head in the cloud development. Second line will be the name of the file. This is because when you're looking at this file in NetSuite, it won't be called contactscripts.js anymore. It'll have uh, quite a different URL. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you here that there will be a typo in my script. You may be able to write perfect code all day long, but some of us do make mistakes. So I'm going to do this one so you can see what happens when your code isn't perfect and so you can see what to do to fix it in NetSuite. So next, start a new function and name it PageInit. PageInit function in NetSuite takes one argument called type. So add that into the function argument list here. This type parameter refers to the way the user has loaded the data entry form. The most common values you'll get in the type parameter are the strings create and edit. So again, our goal is to write some code that only executes when the user is creating a new contact. To accomplish that, we're going to use an if statement and the type parameter. So type in if type equals create. Inside the if statement, we're going to use a sweet script API function to get the name of the user. First, we're going to get the current script execution context, which gives us access to useful things like the user's name, email address, and the company ID. So to do that, we're going to say var context equals nlapi get context. Now to get the user's name, we'll say var username equals context.get name. The NLAPI get context function gets the metadata about the user in the current NetSuite session. I'm not going to cover the SweetScript API in depth in this introductory video, but I will show you how to reference these functions at the end of this video because it is an absolutely essential resource to be able to use NetSuite help. So next, create an alert statement. Type in alert hello plus username. That's it. Save your file and return to your NetSuite window. Back on your script record and in the script file field, click the new button and upload your contact scripts file. Save it. Now take a look at the various functions you can use on a client script here. There is a time and place for each of these, but for now type in the function we just created here in the page init field. Make sure to leave off the parentheses from the function name here. Next, click on the deployments tab. This is where we specify which record types this script will run on. If you wanted to, you could also set it up to only run on specific event types, but that's usually not necessary. 
When you click on the Applies to drop-down, you'll see all the record types that you can set scripts to run on. Select the contact record type. Make sure the status is set to testing. This makes it so the script only runs for the user that created it, or you in other words. This protects other users from experiencing the system changes your code creates until you're confident that there are no bugs in it. So now click Save. Congratulations, your first script is created. Now let's test it to see if it works. Open a new contact by going to Lists, Relationships, Contacts, New. If you follow it along exactly, you'll have the same error in your code that I have on my screen. So here's how to modify your code after you've already implemented the script. Switch back to your text editor. Fix the error in the code. In this case, add quotes to the word hello. Save your file. Now go back into NetSuite. And we need to edit the script file that we uploaded. I find that using global search is the easiest way to do this. So I'll type in contact scripts and then edit this file and then just overwrite it with your new version of your script. Now switch back to your new contact and refresh the page and you should see your greeting. Here it is. So now that we have that working, let's go back to the script record and change the status so our training script doesn't continue to run since it's not very useful at this point. Go back through the NetSuite menu through Customization, Scripting, Scripts. Find your Contacts Client script and click Edit. Go to the Deployments tab. If this was a real project that you wanted everyone else to experience now, you would want to switch the status here to Released and then save it. But for this one, let's turn it off instead by unchecking the Deployed checkbox. Click Save. Now I'm going to show you how to achieve the same results through a different method. Instead of creating a script record, we're going to add the script function through a custom form. So in NetSuite, go back to the new contact creation form. At the top of the form, go to Customize and click Customize Form. Click the Custom Code tab. In the script file here, select contactscripts.js. Type in paginit for the paginit function and click Save. Again, go back to the new contact creation screen and again you should see your greeting. So let's customize this form again now to turn it back off. Go back to the custom code tab and erase that function and clear the script file. Okay, so now you know how to run the simplest possible script. So what's next? The most important resource you'll need while writing scripts in NetSuite is the NetSuite help documentation. Check it out by clicking the help link at the very top right of the screen. From here, expand, expand the Suite Cloud section. Then expand the Suite Script section. Expand the SuiteScript API section, and then click on SuiteScript API Alphabetized Index. I typically have this page printed off and available as a quick reference on my desk when I'm working with SuiteScript. From here, if you wanted to learn more about a specific function, you can click on it and read about the function in detail and see examples. I recommend you print this so you can have a quick reference sheet in hand as you write code. This concludes the SuiteScript 101 class. Now you know how to run scripts in NetSuite. So what should you do next? Again, refer to the SuiteScript documentation in NetSuite. You should first learn more about client scripting. Try out the different trigger functions, 
and practice debugging your code in the browser using Google Chrome's console or the Firebug plugin for Firefox. From there, you should learn user event server-side scripting. This is running scripts before and after a record loads or is submitted. And from there, you can practice debugging those scripts in the NetSuite debugger. So please provide me with feedback on the training you just received. Send any feedback or questions to gurus at headinthecloud.dev.com and check out our website for related information and products at headinthecloud.dev.com. We'll see you at Sweet World.